Number one gives us the formula for the first n terms of a geometric sequence. And then it wants us to use that to um, figure out how much of a drug is left in a body after the last dose. So we need the initial amount, which is the 120 milligrams. So when they take that initial amount, then they're taking it every 12 hours for eight days, which is going to give us how many terms we have. And then they're also telling us that 6% of the drug is still in the body after those 12 hours, which is going to be our rate. Um, so this is the initial amount, 12 hours for eight days. So every 12 hours. So there's 24 hours in a day. So this means that there's going to be 16 doses that this person takes. Um, and then your R is going to be 6% is left in the body after that 12 hours. So your R is going to be 0 0.06. So remember, we need to write the percent as a decimal. So then we're just going to plug this um, into our equation here. So the initial amount um, that's taken is 120 milligrams. Then we do one minus the rate, so 0 0.06 to the 16th, and then over one minus um, 0 0.06. So then you'll just type that into your calculator, and it'll give you um, a decimal of like 127.65. So about 128 milligrams um, will be left. Number two, we're going to use that same formula again. And then this time they're just giving us the A and the R um, to just work with instead of in a situation. So this one wants to know what are the first um, four terms. So our first one is the initial amount, 10. Then we would take 10 times 0.25 to get our second term, which would be 2.5. Then we'll take 2.5 and multiply it um, by 0.25 again. And so that's going to be 0 0.625. And then we'll multiply 0 0.625 times 0.25 again, and we'll get um, 0.156. Um, two five. So now it wants to know what is the sum. So that's where we'll use this formula. So what is the sum after the first or of the first 17 terms? So we could write out all 17 terms if we wanted and then add that all together. Um, otherwise, you'll use this um, formula and just type it in your calculator, which is probably going to be easier. So go ahead and type in the initial value, which is 10, and then one minus the rate. So this is that 0.25. Oops, and then not to, and then we know n. So n is the number of terms. So we're doing the first 17 terms here. So this is going to be to the 17th power. And then on the bottom, one minus um, that rate again. So then type this in your calculator um, make sure that you calculate it correctly with parentheses um, if you calculate it correctly you should get an answer of 13.3 repeating so um, that would be your sum of all of those terms is about 13.3 number three jada drinks a cup of tea every morning at 8 a.m for 14 days um, there's 40 milligrams of caffeine in each cup of tea that she drinks. 24 hours after she drinks the tea, 6% of the caffeine is left in her body. So we see some different things here. We see um, the N value. So the number of days she's doing this for is 14. We see the initial value, which is the 40 milligrams of caffeine that's in each cup she drinks. And then we also see that after each day, only 6% of the caffeine is still in her body. So that's giving us um, our rate here. So this first one wants to know how much caffeine is in her body right after drinking tea on the first day, the second day, and the third day. So on the first day, she'll have that 40 milligrams. 
Then on the second day, she's going to drink another cup of coffee. So on the second day, she's going to have 6% of this 40 and another 40. So if you take and calculate 6% um, of her first cup, okay, so if you do 40 times 0 0.06, you'll get 2.4. So she has 2.4 milligrams left from the first day, plus she's going to drink another cup of tea, so another 40 milligrams. So if we add those together on the second day, she'll have a total of 42.4 milligrams of caffeine. Then on the third day, she's going to have 6% of this, so do 6% of 42.4. So multiply 42.4 times 0 0.06, and you'll get 2.544 milligrams left in her body. Plus, then she's going to drink another cup of tea that has another 40 milligrams. So on the third day, she's going to have a total of 42.544 milligrams of caffeine um, in her body. So now the next one says... When will the total amount of caffeine be the highest during those 14 days? So you can kind of see by this situation that she started at 40, then she has 6% left and adds another 40. Then 6% of that adds another 40. And if we kept continuing this pattern, the highest amount of caffeine she would have is after, whoops, is after drinking that final cup. So after, um, her final cup on day 14. And that's going to be because she has some, um, because some tea from day 1 through 13 still remains in her body. Um, and then plus the new 40 milligrams. Number four, select all polynomials that have X um, plus one as a factor. So remember, if X plus one is a factor, that means that there's no remainder. Um, and so then what that means is that your function, if we plug in the zero, so the zero that goes with X plus one is negative one. So if we plug negative one into the function, it should equal zero. If it does, then it's a factor. If it doesn't, then it's not a factor. So we're going to do this in each problem. So we're going to plug negative 1 in here. So negative 1 to the third is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 2 is plus 2. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. And then we have the negative 6. If we add all of that um, together, we get 0. So this one has x plus 1 as a factor because f of negative 1 equals 0. So let's um, do that for this next one as well. So for g, let's plug in negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 7 times negative 1 is plus 7 and then plus 6. So this um, g of negative 1 is equal to 12. So this is not a factor. So x plus 1 is not a factor of g. Negative 1 into h. So negative 1 cubed gives us negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5. And then we have plus 6. So if we add these together, we get negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Um, plus 6 is 8. Whoops. So h of negative 1 is equal to 8. So this is not a factor for g. So then we'll do j of negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 7 times negative 1 is positive 7. And then we have minus 6. So j of negative 1, if we add those together, is 0. So it is a factor here. And then finally for k, negative 1 squared is 1, minus 1 
So k of negative 1 is 0, so it is a factor for e. Number five, a car begins to drive in heavy traffic, then continues on the highway without traffic. The average cost um, in dollars of the gas this car uses per mile, so the cost of gas per mile for driving X miles is this function here. So as X gets larger and larger, meaning they drive more and more miles, what does the end behavior of the function tell you? So remember, if we look at this, Okay, we can divide this function out by dividing the x under both pieces. So then this x will um, cancel to 1. So we have 0.065 divided by x plus 0.15. So as the x gets really, really large, this is going to um, drop out. So this is going to be basically 0 at a million. So that means that the average cost per mile is getting closer and closer to 15 cents. So getting closer and closer to 15 cents as you drive more miles. Number six, what's a rational equation that cannot have a solution um, at x equals negative, or sorry, x equals two? So this means that the denominator, so a rational equation has fractions, right? And so when we write this equation, that means that the denominator cannot equal zero when x equals two. So the factor that goes with x equals two, we bring that x back over, um, and that means that x minus 2 can't equal 0. So you just have to have x minus 2 as a factor down here. Anything else um, you can put in. So if you want to do it as 12 over x minus 2, that's fine. You could have 12x squared over x minus 2 times x plus 7 if you wanted to make it more complicated. Um, but you have to have this x minus 2 factor in the denominator. Then number seven, um, for the values of zero and negative one, x plus one cubed is equal to x cubed plus one. Does this mean the equation is an identity? And this does not um, because it does not guarantee that all values of x will, will work, okay? So it does not um, guarantee that this is true for all values. So it, it only guarantees that it's good for these two, not all values, and an identity um, has to have all values of x um, be true into the expressions.